Yo, yo, yo. How you guys doing? You doing good? You look good. God is good, amen? Awesome. Hey, if you got your Bibles, turn with me. We're going to 1 Corinthians tonight, uh, looking at chapter 9, uh, verses 19 to 27. And uh, we've called this thing Restoring Gospel Intentionality. Um, uh, real quick, uh, got off the airplane this morning um, at 3 a.m. after doing a weekend with, uh, with God, guns, and guys. No joke. Like, I, I, got, I got to shoot a ton of other people's ammunition, which is good. Um, because uh, ammunition isn't cheap right now. It's the last days. Not sure if you heard. It's like... It's like a dollar ninety-seven for a round of nine millimeter. Um, so yeah, something like that. It just depends where you're shopping, bro. But it, it, if you can even find it, dude, right? Like so. Anyways, uh, we had so much fun last night. Um, we were with about thirty guys, just prophesying over each other, just enjoying each other, enjoying the spirit uh, of the Lord, and then uh, and then uh, got to hang out with um, men on the front lines. It's Robert Hodgkin, Francis Arbolola, butchered that. And, um, and just a bunch of really cool guys. But it is super good to be back. We've had fun today, SRC. Did uh, two amazing services this morning. Jesus showed up. Uh, got to hang out with a bunch of crazy evangelists uh, for our Pattern Interrupt evangelism uh, course. That was amazing. Um, and now I'm with, 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 with you weirdos. So this is going to be good. You, you excited? You are kind of the wild ones, right? I sense that. I sense that in the spirit. Good, good, good. All right. We're talking tonight about restoring gospel intentionality. And, um, and what I want to talk to you about is, is this place where sometimes hot things over time can become lukewarm. And lukewarm things over time can become cold if we don't remain over the flame. Yeah, if we don't remain over the flame. So sometimes when you first get saved, you're like super excited and you're super like stoked about Jesus, things of God. All right, all right, all right let's, let's just do this. I know you're excited, but just pause for a second. Calm down, okay? Um, and now I want you to, all right, I want you to shout out, what, what, what's some of your favorite restaurants? I know it's been a long, I know it's been a long time since you've eaten at a restaurant, but, but go ahead and just, just and I better not hear McDonald's because I will get off this stage and, and slap someone. Oh, but, but let me hear you. What? Okay, I'm not, I'm just going to take your word for it, brother. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, like, like all, all you can eat, all you can eat steakhouse? All right, let's do that sometime. Pizza Hut, okay, all right, what else, what else? Azteca, what else? What is it? Magianos? Yeah, in Bel Magianos. A Muslim me, a Muslim me, a Muslim. I, I heard, I heard it over here. Applebee's. Okay, all right. We'll pray. We'll pray for you at the end. It's all good. It's all good. I got a couple of gift cards you can have. All right. What else? What else? Red Robin. Good. What else? What? Coho. The Coho Cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. They got some good stuff there. Don't get the beef Wellington. What else? Yay's Walk. Yes, come on. The best Chinese food restaurant on earth, actually. Red Lobster. Good. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. What is it? Okay, good. I picked the win. I didn't say that right. Olive Garden. Yes, and the sausage spicy kind of soup thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and the salads, and it's all you can eat soup. And you get that with the breadsticks? Oh my gosh. How many, how, many, how many of you getting hungry tonight? Okay. Now, how many of you, like, you found, like, an amazing restaurant, and then when you find it, you got to tell everybody else about it? Yeah, it's like you eat something, you're like, oh my goodness, this is like the best thing ever. I've got to tell every. Now, how many of you remember when you first met Jesus, it was like, it was the same thing. It was like, man, you tasted and you could see that God was good. That God is good. And it's just like you had to tell everyone. Yeah. And then how many of you know that sometimes we get busy. And sometimes our Christianity becomes just like juggling. Juggling a lot of different um, uh, responsibilities. A lot of different things. And, um, and so sometimes hot things over time can become lukewarm. And lukewarm things over time can become cold. If we're not over, over the flame. And tonight we're going to be talking about how do we get back our intentionality? How do we get, how do we get sharp again? 
How do we get to, the, to, to this place where like, where every day we are tasting and we are seeing for ourselves that Jesus, that Jesus is good? Is that good? So that's what we're going to be talking about uh, tonight. Now, sometimes, um, sometimes we can identify, we can discern actually what the problem is. Like if, 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 if we're in this place where we're not necessarily on fire for the things of God, but we're, we're not backslidden, you know, it's not like we're doing drugs or anything, but it's just like we're still going to church and we're still praying and we're still trying to do our best, but it's like, man, what, what is the problem? So I think that if we're able to define the problem, then we should be able to um, discern it. Am I kind of feeding back and, and ringing a little bit? Okay. It's, it's kind of distracting to me. So I'm just going to go to um, my old trusted weapon here. The handheld. How's that? Man, that sounds like revival. Man. We could do some revival tonight with this thing. My Lord. And Nate, bring it up in the, in the monitor a little bit here. And I, I, and I did that right at the point. I know I got you in suspense. And, um, but I'm going to tell you what the problem is. I'm all wired up, Anthony. Here we go. We're just going to start over. Lights, camera, okay, here we go. The problem is self. You see, when we give our lives to Jesus, it's all of a sudden, it's like, our eyes are open wide. It's all of a sudden, like, a whole new world. It's like, yes, I've tasted a whole new language. All of a sudden, I'm bringing a language of the Spirit. Shabbat akiri, amandari akiri. Oh, angels, yes. Demons, boo, gross. Oh, oh my goodness, it's a whole new world. Then over time, it's kind of like, you know, uh, okay, yeah, all right, I believe in all that stuff. I'm, I'm still a Christian. I'm still, but what's the problem? The problem is, I, I got a lot going on, bro. I got a lot uh, go, going, uh, go, going on. And sometimes, um, over time, we become our biggest goal. Sometimes, over time, we become the prize. I press on. I push forward. Forgetting all that lays behind. I'm pressing on to get to what? To get to the future me. I'm working on this amazing project. What is it? Me. And I've got this incredible thing called Christianity, and it exists to do what? To make me a better me. And, guys, this is where our problem is at. Why? Because Jesus didn't live that way. Because how many know that, like, him, like Jesus leaving heaven to come to earth, okay, that he didn't do that because of him like how do you know that that like 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 that when he was like i gotta go where father i gotta do what that's just not very convenient because i'm really busy father i got a lot of things going on father i've got a blog right like no 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 <laughs> jesus came because of selfless love and that if we're going to restore our gospel intentionality, then we have to, we have to um, admit that selfishness is the antithesis of the gospel. Why? Because it is the enemy of love. Yeah, that when we are selfish, we start attaching strings to everything. Yeah, and if we're not careful, we can, we, we can find ourselves in this place where we're ministering and we're giving. Why? I'm ministering to you. I'm giving to you. I'm investing in you. Why? Because I'm hoping that it produces a harvest where you in the end will serve me. I'm sowing into you. Why? So that there will be harvest added to me. And if we're going to begin to restore Everyone's declare restore. Yeah, come on. How I many you know that when God restores something, he brings it into a state that's better than its original state? How I many you know that when God restores something, he doesn't just fix it. He, he recreates it. How many of you, God isn't just fixing something in you. He's actually recreating something in you. He, he's not just, uh, you're not just his little, uh, little project. You are a son and he's developing Christ likeness inside of you. So if we're going to talk about this place of restoring, that means a new creation manifestation taking place inside of us. It's going to be very, very important that we get healed 
of a chronic disorder that exists within the church. This is a scientific chronic disorder that's been given a name from very smart men with very large heads. You can write this down. It's called, look at my notes. It's called Ibolius Ingronius. Okay? And here's how it works. Here's how it works. In the same way that your toenails, if you neglect them, they can begin to grow inward. If we don't watch it, our eyeballs over time will go inward and we will look, we will live the rest of our lives looking at ourselves, becoming self-obsessed. At the end of the day, it's about me, it's about my rights, it's about my authority, it's about my name, it's about my ministry. Yep, and what is that? That is not Jesus. What is that? That is that place where we are professing the name, but we are not possessing the character and nature that is the gospel. What does gospel mean? That's a good question. Gospel means good news. It means good news of great joy. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Jesus was always talking about the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is the place of his rule and his reign. It is the realm where the character and nature of Jesus is, is, is the primary, dominant, established government in that locale. Jesus said the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is the good news of the kingdom where corporately we begin to carve out a realm where people step into a place where there is such a grace where when you walk in you realize that you're being, you're being seen, you're being heard, you're being known. Why? Because there's a, a body of people that look like Jesus. They're not self-obsessed. They're obsessed with Jesus, and they're obsessed with what Jesus is obsessed with, and that is people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to read some scripture verses. You guys ready? We're going to look at Paul here, and Paul's going to be talking about a solution to the problem, the solution to ingronius Ibolius. And the first solution we're going to talk about is, I want you to read this with me, to live life externally focused. Would you just read that with me right now? Live life externally focused. Here we go. Verse 19. Now, even though I'm free from obligations to others, I joyfully make myself a servant to all in order to win as many converts as possible. He goes, now. Everyone say now. No, de declare it with me right now. Just say now. All right, good. That'll pull you into right now. This means not tomorrow, not next year, right now. So I know some of us are already on Monday thinking about what we're going to order at Starbucks tomorrow morning. But let's leave Monday alone, and let's just come back into this building. Let's be here. Let's be now. He goes, even though I am free from obligations to others. So even though I'm not afraid of what you think about me, okay, I'm not doing this because... Uh, in the world, the world says to serve people. Why? Serve people because if you don't, they might reject you. So fear becomes the motivator to do good works in the world. And what does Paul say? I joyfully make myself a servant to all. Yeah. He says, I joyfully. That means a joy in my heart. I make myself a servant to all to do what? To win as many converts as possible. You say, wait a second, I thought you were a, an apostle. What are you doing being an evangelist? What are you doing winning souls? This is, this, this, this is what we know. That a true apostle is radically evangelistic. Why? A true apostle loves Jesus and loves who Jesus loves. Therefore, you can discern a true apostle because they love people and not just Christian people. They love all people. And this is what he says, not out of fear or manipulation, I joyfully have made myself available to all. Why? To convert them. I'll say it again. To convert them. Paul was really big 
into conversion. Now, this last week, I posted something about this text, and I had Christians saying to me, Pastor Darren, it's not the job of Christians to convert people. We are just to love people. It's not our job to save people. Now, I'll just give you a, um, a, 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 a metaphor here. Uh, uh, if I was drowning, if I was lost, if I was out in, 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 the, out in the water and I was drowning, and you were a lifeguard, Okay, and you had, you had your, your binoculars on me, and you saw that I was drowning. Guess what I don't want from you? What? Okay. A what? A child. Okay. All right, good. All right, this is what I don't want from you. I don't want for you to love me with words only. I want to see your love at work. I want to see... I don't want to hear your love. (laughs) If I'm dying, I don't want to hear your love. I want to see your love. I want to see that you love me enough to get off your little lifeguard pest, to jump in and to save me. And this is what Paul says. I have given myself as a servant of all to be like a lifeguard, to be like a shepherd in order to bring people through this amazing spiritual process called spiritual conversion, which is that moment when you transform from darkness into light, when you go from thinking like an orphan to being awakened to your identity and destiny as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God. He says, I'm in this thing not just to affirm you, I am in this thing to save you. Yeah, so for the believers that are just like, no, it it is our job. Our only job is to love people. Er, Wrong. Nope. Our role is to save people. And like Paul's going to say here in a second, it's to do everything possible just short of sinning to reach people where they are at. Not to try to get people where we are at, but that we would go where they at. Let's keep reading. Verse 20, he said, look at, I became Jewish to the Jewish people in order to win them to the Messiah. I became like one under the law to gain people who were stuck under the law. And even though I myself am not under the law, and to those who are without the Jewish laws, I became like them as one without the Jewish laws in order to win them. Although I am not outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, I became weak to win the weak. I've adapted to the culture of every place that I have gone so that I could easily win people to Christ. This is what he says. I haven't compromised my morals. I haven't compromised my fruit. It's, it's just that I've made up my mind that I'm not going to let the rigidness of a religious framework castrate me from multiplication. Let me tell you something. For years in the church, the win has been our survival. We get freaked out. We read books. We go to conferences. We watch YouTube videos, and we think, man, this is it. This is the end. Freak out. Bunker down, right? Um, uh, uh, This is definitely the end. Uh, Like, look, at the end of the day, our job is just, just to survive. Just to survive. But this is what Paul says. He says for him, survival's not the win. Why? Because in the first century church, these guys, they were willing to die that the church might multiply. They said, survival's not the win. I am willing to die if it means that we multiply. And church, listen, survival's not the win. Just make it, like, like Bobby Connor said, if, if, the, if the job was just to get to heaven, all we would need are evangelists and snipers. Repeat after me, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, forgive me all my sin, forgive me all my sin. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Lord, sorry. All right, Bobby, got it? All right, got it. He's putting on his little silencer. Think. Yeah, all, I don't know what that was, but uh, all we would need are evangelists and snipers. Lead people to Jesus, take them out, send them to heaven. Why are we still here? We've been given a mission. It's called the Great Co-Mission, and that is it is our role to go into all the world and to manifest, reveal heaven on earth to those who are in hell on earth. This 
is the great joy that we don't do out of fear of man. We do this out of love for God, that we will go to those that are nothing like us. We won't, we won't, um, we, we're not going to sin, and we're not going to fall into the patterns of the past, but we're going to go in. We're going to meet them where they are at, because it is our role to expose heaven on earth to people who are living in hell on earth. Survival's not the win. Multiplication is the win, because what's the fruit of love and intimacy and covenant? Multiplication. Religion, it'll castrate you. Religion, it'll remove your reproductive organs. It'll say, this is how you perform. This is how you behave. This is how you, 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 you. Religion will convince you that it's all about you. And it'll always keep you in the old hamster wheel of works. Always running in place. Trying to do, 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 do. And we all know that do, do just amounts to a bunch of do, do. Let me just tell you this right now. Jesus did so you can be. Jesus accomplished it. Religion says, work harder, study more, be better, be gooder. Measure up. Measure up. Measure up. Your output isn't enough. Buddha, before he, di- before he died, Buddha said this. And I'll do my best Buddha impression. And you won't know if it's good or bad because you never heard him talk. So anyways, this is what Buddha said before he died. Strive without ceasing. It sounded like Java the Hutt. It, uh, strive without ceasing. What did Jesus say before he died? It is finished. I've done it. It's done. It's complete. What is that? That's called good news. Number two, let God's love for others lead you. Glenn, if you could put that one up. Let God's love for others lead you. Let love lead you. Yeah? Just declare that with me. Let love lead me. Look at this. Paul says this in verse 23. I've done all of this so that I could become God's partner for the sake of the gospel. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about all these different rights. I don't know if you guys were here for the, for the meat Sunday. It was awesome. Were you here for the meat Sunday? On the, on the background, I had a gigantic ribeye. And it looked really good for you guys. But for people watching at home, it was kind of gross. Because they got the camera zoomed in really close on me. So the widescreen was like a delicious ribeye. But on, on, if you're watching online, it just looked like a big black lung. It's so zoomed in, right? It was just like this big. But, it, but we... So that was, the, that was the big black lung sermon. Um, that week, Paul's talking about meat offered to idols. And you know what he says? I can eat it. It don't bother me. I ain't afraid of no idols. Hey, and that's some good meat, and it's cheap. But you know what he said? Because of love for you, I'll lay down that right, and I would go without food if it meant that it wasn't going to make you stumble because it's not about being right. It's about relationship. Last week, what did we talk about? I had all this gold all over the screen. Last week was like the gold week. And we talked about ministers and money. And Paul said, hey, look, I'm a legit apostle. And it's my right to get paid by y'all. And he, and he gave a bunch of examples. He's like, there's nothing wrong with ministers getting paid for what they're doing. And he, and he gave a bunch of examples. Then you know what he said? I'm going to waive that right. I don't want your money. I don't want to be on the payroll. I am not for sale. I'm not going to allow money to compromise the integrity of this gospel message that I'm bringing. So even though it's my right, I'm going to waive that right. Why? Because of my love for you. Yeah, if we want to see our gospel intentionality restored, okay, Um, then it is radically, radically important that we live life externally focused and we let the love of God lead us. Yeah? Why? Because the love of God will hold us accountable that we're not being selfish. Why? Because love will combat selfishness. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. How many of you, you want to love others with pure motive, with pure intent. You don't want to be loving others just so you can get your own back scratched. Guess what? There's a lot of books out there, and it'll teach you how to manipulate others in order to get your needs met. Can I tell you something? That's not the word of God. That's not the gospel, and that's not Christianity. Paul says, I've waived all of my rights. Check it out. He says, I have waived all of my rights. Okay? That I would be a partner of God for the sake of the gospel. How many of that? That's your desire. You want to be a partner of God. Come on, let's keep reading. Verse 24. Isn't it obvious that all the runners on the racetrack keep on running to win, but only one receives the victor's prize? Yet each of you must run the race to be victorious. A true athlete will be disciplined in every respect, practicing constant self-control in order to win a laurel wreath that quickly withers. But we run our race to win a victor's crown that will last forever. How long? How long? Forever, ever? Ever, ever. Verse 26. For that reason... I don't just run for exercise. He says, and I don't just box like one throwing aimless punches in the air. I don't just, I, I don't just box like, 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 like 1980s box dancing. Okay, one person thought that's funny. I thought that was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> dun, dun. Okay, all right, we'll just save up. All right, here we go. Um, verse 27. But I do what? <laughs> I train like a champion. And then he goes, look at this. I train like a champion. I think like a champion. I live like a champion. Right? He says, I subdue my body. I get it under control so that after preaching the good news to others, I won't be disqualified. This is what he says. He says, look, I ain't just like any other Christian. Okay? He says, I'm methodical. I am calculated. I am committed. And I am disciplined. I'm intentional. I'm living life on purpose. I understand what I'm preaching. And I'm not just preaching it. I'm living it. And I'm not just living it. I'm also preaching it. He says, I'm preaching it and I subject my entire being in total and complete submission to Christ. So that at the end of the day, okay, and at the end of the day, and this is what I love. One of my favorite Presbyterian ministers, his name's Tim Keller, okay. He's, every now and then, you, you got to have some diversity in your bread. And I'm telling you, Presbyterian bread, okay, it's an acquired taste. Okay, kind of like me. I'm an, I'm an acquired taste. This is your first time. Trust me, you'll love it. But I'm kind of like fine wine. It takes some maturity and a little bit to get it used, used to, okay? Uh, <laughs> you know, then before you know it, you're like, oh, wow, that's robust. Thank you. All right. <laughs> But this, but, 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 but this is Tim Keller, Presbyterian. Okay, here we go. Stay focused. You guys, you guys are rough tonight. This is what he says. He who through faith is righteous shall live. And then Tim says, and I know I'm a Presbyterian, but then the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord spoke to me and said, yeah, but he who through preaching is righteous shall die. This is what Tim uh, said. As ministers, as believers, as people who love revelation, we must always remember that it is faith in and through Christ Jesus that brings forth our righteousness, lest over time we believe the lie that we who through our own revelation, that we who through our own preaching, that we through our own ministry, that we who through our own works, that that will only produce death. Paul says, I'm preaching it, I'm living it, and when it comes to my body, I'm buffeting it. You know, you know, this is kind of funny. You know what buffeting it means? It means I'm beating the snot out of it. This is what he says. I'm different from you. I think like a champion. I live like a champion. And I'm living to stink and win. And that means that every day matters. I want you to just declare this right now. Every day matters. I sense that one or two of you didn't say it and I want you to. You drove all the way here. You might as well participate. 
okay? Participate class. Every day matters. If you're not awake, buffet your body, okay? In love, in love. Okay. Every day matters. Think like a champion. Run like a champion. Pray like a champion. Preach like a champion. Pray for the sick like a champion. We don't just pray to pray. We don't just live to live. And we are not just living to survive. Survival is not the win. The win is multiplication. The win is that heaven comes to earth and that heaven gets revealed to people who are living in hell on earth. And at the end of the day, we, Seattle Revival Center, will not be the lifeguards who didn't even have the the binoculars up. They weren't even watching the water. Why? Because they had their binoculars on their belly button saying, well, I got some things I need to be working on myself. Meanwhile, a generation and a nation is perishing. Meanwhile, I see the stats of youth who are contemplating and actually walking out suicide. I see the stats. I see the things. I'm in the same atmosphere as you. When we look out, people are perishing. And I got good news. The gospel is Christ Jesus who is inside of you. And if you're willing to look like a fool, you might as well save some lives. If you're willing to take a risk, I might get made fun of. I might fail. This clown might even try to drown me. But I know why this is why I'm still alive. This is why I'm still here. This is why I'm still breathing. I'm believing, and now I know that the Lord wants to use me to reveal his goodness, his kindness, and his mercy to others. I'm not going to be my own self-salvation project. I'm Jesus' problem. I am Jesus' problem. You got a lot of issues. Yeah, I know, but I kind of gave up on them. I gave them to Jesus. I'm his problem. How can you say that, Pastor Darren? Christians should always be making themselves better. Well, look, you've been trying to make yourself better for how long? And how's that working for you? Why don't you stop putting all your eggs in the self basket and put all your eggs in the Jesus basket? Giving your life completely to Jesus. Listen, I'm telling you tonight, it's not about you being good. It's about you giving your life to the shepherd. Coming into this place where you can say, no, 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 no. I'm not my own shepherd. Nope, nope, not going to do it. I am a helpless and very cute lamb. And I got a shepherd. And I'm not going to have to prove anything. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want I am his, and he is mine. He brought me to his banqueting table, and his banner over me is love. I don't have to put up my own banner. I don't have to put the Darren banner over the Darren table, set my own table, get out my stuffed animals, and just have a weirdo little party. No, no, no. I've got a daddy. I've got a home. I've got a table. And all I have to do is show up. And all I have to do is eat what he is serving me. I got a good, good daddy. You have a good, good daddy. If you don't know you have a good, good daddy, I got good news tonight. You're not an orphan. You were lied to. I know you've been on the outside looking through the window saying, man, it'd be so good to be in there for that meal. The door is open. You are a son. Come inside and receive. Receive from the Father's banqueting table. His banner over you is love. His banner over you is love. 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 And the last thing. Number one, live life externally focused. Let the love of God lead us. And the last thing is this. Repent of all distractions. Nate, can you put that one up for me? Repent of all distractions. Specifically speaking of repenting of the distractions that would come to kill our passion for Christ and people. What are those things that have been distracting us? They've been coming after our passion for the Lord, for who he is, his word, and for the people that he so desperately loves and gave his son for. People. And it, Here's the thing, guys. How many of you are survivors? Listen, some of you, you got ready for Y2K. How many Y2K survivors do we have tonight? Not just me. Good, good, good. I, 
I'm glad you took it seriously. But come on, you know what we've, what we've survived? Something that was actually far crazier than Y2K? 2020. And the first three months of 2021. <laughs> Right? And can I tell you what happened in 2020 and the first three months of 2021? It's like all of a sudden, like I used to be a pretty loving guy. Like I, in 2019, I, I would have said, I love everyone. I love everyone. I'm a pretty loving guy. I'm a pretty, I'm like one of the nicer guys that I know. Okay? And then, and then something happened. What happened? 2020 happened. And all of a sudden, people that I've always, like, people that I've known, there's actually people on Facebook that I actually know. So out of 5,000, there's, there's probably about two to 300 that I actually know. I'm not bragging. I'm just, I'm just saying. The rest of them, I, I have no idea who they are. And people that I actually know posting some of the craziest stuff. And I'm reading these comments on Facebook. I'm like, you believe What? You're saying what? What you're saying is fundamentally opposite of everything that I believe in, of everything that I stand for. And not only that, listen, listen, I don't go, I don't go troll, trolling other people's stuff, okay? But here's the thing. I'll put something on my own Facebook of something that I believe. And also people that I actually, like, like these, these like people that I've known since before they were even born. I knew them before they were even babies. And I've watched them come into the age of, 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 they've matured into the age of annoyingness. And now I'm like, I know you, I love you, and you are, you are triggering me, and you keep showing up on my page. In my house, I should be able to say whatever I want with my family. You come into my house and tell me what I can and cannot say? This is a bummer, but we are no longer friends. Goodbye. I'm, I, okay, I'm just repenting my sin tonight, okay? I'm just, I'm just repenting of, of my sin tonight. Here, here, here's, here's what I'm trying to get at. If we're going to restore our first love for the things of the gospel, the things of the kingdom, meaning that, like Paul, we're willing to go into some tricky waters with some tricky people. Paul said, I'm not even under the law, but I'll come under it to love you, to serve you, and to save you. He said this. Let's say that you don't know nothing about the law and you're in lawlessness. I will come to you in your realm of lawlessness. I will come to you as you in order to love you, reach you, and save you. Ah. No. No, I will not go there. I will not do that. I will not speak to them. I do not like them right now. They are the problem. Now let me tell you something real quick. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against puppet masters. And sometimes when we go fighting people, what we're actually doing is we're beating down the very sheep we're supposed to be seeking and saving. And we're blaming them for the flesh hooks that are in their soul that are going up to a puppet master that's manipulating them. And this is what I think the Lord wants to do in the church. <laughs> Let's make it more personal. I think this is something that the Lord wants to do in Pastor's Darren, Pastor Darren's heart. That I would have enough discernment to be able to discern between the puppet and the puppet master. So that I can use my energy to not beat down the sheep that the shepherd laid his life down for. That if we're going to restore our gospel intentionality, if we're going to live like champions, if we're going to fight like winners, if we're going to really, really do this thing, then we're going to need the kind of love that we do not possess in and of ourselves. And we're going to need to get very serious to repent of the distractions that are coming against our passion for Christ and our passion for people. And if we're willing to come to him, and if we're willing to pray this very dangerous prayer, this is, this is part of the reason why I'm a pastor. Listen, I swore I would never be a pastor. I said, 
How did you do that? Well, I said, I will never be a pastor. <laughs> and then one day I prayed a very, very dangerous prayer. You know what I prayed? Father, give me your heart for people. And he did. And I became a pastor. But then I lost it. And now I need to find it again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I still love people. I sure love you. I mean, you guys are cool. But these other guys, my goodness. So this is what I thought we could do tonight. I thought we could come before the Lord as a church. And that we could say, Father, it is our desire that we wouldn't be like everybody else. That from a place, not from like fear of rejection, and not from a place of like trying to be a better Christian, but from a place, place of really loving Jesus, that we could say, not from a place of obligation, we joyfully give of ourselves as servants to reach and to make converts of people's Places, things, anointings, to see cities and nations radically converted. To see the strings of the puppet masters broken. And to see sons and daughters awaken to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. And I thought, man, tonight would be really cool if we could just end by inviting Holy Spirit to come. To reveal any sort of distractions. Repent. You know what repent means? Good, man. Good, good, good. You want a job? We're hiring. Um, yeah, dude. And, and you know what that looks like? It looks like you're driving down the road, right? <laughs> with rap music playing, because all Christians drive down the road with rap music playing. Um, and you're driving down the road, and all of a sudden you realize something. What? What do you realize? You're going the wrong direction. So what do you do? You do what Christians do. You bust a U-turn. And then where do you start going? The right direction. You know what that is? That's repentance. Come on. You're hired. You're going the wrong direction. You bust the U-turn. You're going in the right direction. You were, you were driving away from Jesus, and now you're driving to Jesus and with Jesus. And I thought, hey, tonight, let's bust some U-turns. Let's ask Holy Spirit to come. To show us any sort of wrong direction that we're going. Any sort of like things that we're believing that we shouldn't really be believing. Right? And let's just come before the Lord just saying like, hey, listen, listen there's, a, there's a big battle for our attention and for our passion. Companies are paying billions and billions of dollars to do what? To get their, 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 their strings attached into our souls with their flesh hooks. So that we, the sons and daughters of God, will be like little Pinocchios being manipulated by the spirit of this world. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm free. I just want to be a real boy. <clears throat> Let's ask the Holy Spirit to come and cut the strings tonight. I come against every spirit of Geppetto right here now. Jesus, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you ready? You ready to do this? You ready to get free of some stuff tonight? All right. When you're ready, jump up to your feet. Melanie, do you know that song, All Hail King Jesus? Good, because I don't. What I want to do is, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. We're going to come to Jesus face to face. And then we're just going to worship Jesus for a second. And we're going to sing, All Hail King Jesus. And we're going to ask Jesus that his passion for this world would reignite our intentionality. That we could say, I'm not just leaving. I'm not just living. I'm not just surviving. I'm like a champion. I think like an athlete. I pray like a champion. I'm living life on purpose. I'm not just in this thing just to be in it. I'm in this thing to win it. I only want first place. I'm not in this thing for second place. I'm not in this thing for, I don't want the participation trophy. I am in this to complete my high call. I'm in this to crush this. 
I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my life. I don't want to just jump through a bunch of weird religious hoops that make me feel better about myself. I don't want that. And I know you don't want that either. You ready to pray? Cool. Just close your eyes. Holy Spirit, would you come right now? We need you. Jesus, we just come before you. And Jesus, would you come before us right now? Jesus, what we need can only come from you. The love that this world needs can only come from you. We do not have what it takes to love people the way that they need to be loved. We are not smart enough to tell people what they need to hear. But Jesus, everything that this world needs is in your heart. And you are willing to release it onto the earth through your sons and your daughters. And tonight, Jesus, we say, we are available. We have no desire to be religious. We have no desire to play a part. We have no desire to play a role. It is our desire to be burning ones. It is our desire to be on fire. To be on fire with the purpose and the high call of God in our life. And we declare tonight we are free from religion. We declare tonight we are free from manipulation. We declare tonight Christ Jesus has set us free of every puppet master. Holy Spirit, would you come right now? And would you reveal the distractions, those things that have been targeting our passion, those things that have been targeting our bandwidth, those things that have been targeting our hearts, those things that have been preoccupying us, those things, those duties, those distractions. Lord, we come before you tonight and we say, we know these distractions are not of you. We know these distractions are not of your Holy Spirit. And we say, say this with me, distraction, you're not for me. You're not of the kingdom of God. You're not of his kingdom. Distraction. I renounce you. And I command you to come out and up right now. We send you where you belong. To the pit right now in Jesus' name. To the pit right now in Jesus' name. To the pit right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. All demonic voices. Go right now in Jesus' name. I said go to hell right now in Jesus' name. All temptation, that spirit of temptation, that snake that sneaks into the garden, you are not for me. Just declare it. Devil, you are not for me. Temptation, you are not for me. You are not of my Father's kingdom. You don't get to stay here. You don't get to be my roommate, devil. Right now, I renounce you. I send you to the feet of Jesus. You're not mine. You're not my problem. I send you to my shepherd right now. Out and up, out and up, right now, 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 right now. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Fire right now, fire right now, fire right now, fire right now, fire. The fire of God in this room right now. Hallelujah. The fire of God in this room right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's sing. Let's sing. Let's sing. Yes, Lord.
tonight if you want to just find a place at the altar prepare a place for jesus you're invited to you can stay where you're at but you're also welcome just to find a place for jesus here just a receiving posture just bow your head and close your eyes and just receive by faith you might be feeling it tonight you might not be feeling it tonight it's not about feelings it's about faith amen patty pastor patty was talking tonight about this realm where we believe and belief opens up a portal it opens up a place where we can receive and we just declare tonight jesus we believe in our hearts that you are lord just pray this with me right now just say jesus i believe i confess with my mouth that you are lord that you are god i make you tonight my shepherd i make you tonight my primary object of affection tonight i declare christ jesus you are the prize you are the goal lord you are the object of my affection lord i declare tonight lord you are my savior you are my king and now i just pray for you right now that you'd receive peace that you'd receive joy unspeakable and full of glory that you'd receive a revelation of your righteousness in christ jesus that you would see yourself for who you are that you are a priest and a king that your father's not ashamed of you your father is proud of you I declare of you right now, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And I declare, as of this day forward, you're no longer one walking in the flesh, the desires of the flesh, self-obsessed, but you are now free. I said you are now free. I said you are now free. You are now free. You are free to be who God has called you to be. Father, I thank you for everything that you've done for us. 
I thank you that you're madly in love with us. Now, Father, by faith, we receive your heart for people. Your heart for cities. Your heart for Seattle. Your heart for nations. Your heart for the United States of America. We, by faith, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would give us an impartation of your heart that we would love without limits and that we would be led by love. Come on, Pastor Anthony, you wanna wrap this up? Thank you, Melanie, so good. I said in the first two services, uh, there's a real quick thing you can do uh, that will help you follow the Lord when he's leading you and it's the five second rule. So uh, next time the Lord nudges you this week, uh, and he may just say, go talk to that person or go give that person $5 or, or hey, message this person. Don't wait. Immediately do it. And there's a five-second rule. You just count to five and then do it. Uh, and you will actually stop yourself from taking it from the immediate, uh, which is where we respond immediately to the Lord. Uh, but after five seconds, it kicks into logic, and oftentimes we, we derail. So just want to bless you guys with that. that this week, God's going to tell you what to do, and you're going to do it. And you're going to have testimonies of all these ways that he's going to use you to speak life, to, to spread his love, to, uh, to really bring light. And you're not going to have to work hard. You just have to say yes. Amen? Amen. So it's going to be an awesome week. Um, our ministry team, if you guys could come on up to the front. Um, there's already an awesome just a time of ministry happening between people and the Lord. But if you need prayer, please don't go. Let our ministry team pray for you. But you guys, God bless you. Have a great Sunday evening and a great week. And we'll see you later next week. Take care. SRC, here's a few highlights of what's happening here at church. Hi, Rebecca Revisto with the Women's Ministry Team. I am so excited to invite all of you ladies to our first event for 2021, Level Up. As a church, we've been spending time in 1 Corinthians, and as we've been preparing our time to come together, I felt like the Lord highlighted 1 Corinthians 1.10, which ends in saying that you being perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same thought. So we as a women's leadership team are inviting you to come to be equipped and empowered to run after all that the Lord is doing in this time, that he is preparing his bride, his church, to bring his kingdom. So come this Saturday, March 20th, 1 until 4, you can register online or find the QR code in your bulletin. Come bring a friend, come meet someone new, and come level up with us. I'll see you there. Greetings, SRC. I'm Matt McIntyre with the Men's Ministry Committee. You may be wondering, why is this guy sitting here with a splitting mall? Well, I'm doing it because it's manly. Then you ask, why is this guy sitting here having a tea party with his daughter? Because that's also manly. You know what else is manly? Getting together as men to encourage each other. So come down to the Fellowship Hall this Saturday at 8 a.m. We get to eat a lot of bacon, eggs, potatoes, and other goodies. We also get to hear from Phil Seaton and what the Lord has been doing in his life. After that, we're going to have a time of ministry where we're going to encourage one another, build each other up, and pray for each other. So come on out this Saturday and be a man. And there's a lot more to be keeping up with here at SRC in terms of events and gatherings. So you'll just want to visit our website to keep up to date with the latest happenings here at SRC.